Hello and welcome to another Total War Warhammer guide. Today we are looking at three different magical laws that the Beastmen have access to. And that is the mighty Beasts, Death and Wild. So they have various different abilities, various different spells. They work in a slightly different way. And we're going to go through each one. Uh, we'll go through the basic abilities and then obviously the different spells. How the three different Shaman differ from each other and how differently they're used in battle. So they've got... Each one has 3,810 hit points. They have exactly the same stats. Um, 15 armor, dreadful. Leadership 55, dreadful. Speed 38, melee attack of 30, defense 24, 240 weapon strength. 60 of that is armor piercing and a charge bonus of 38. So obviously not a combat character. Um, in a dire situation, you could take on a unit of goblins um, and do all right. <laughs> but you don't really want to be using these guys in combat. So first up, we're going to look at the Wild Law. They, they do look very similar, the Shaman. I'm, it's a shame they didn't put more work into making him. You could have given him a... I was going to say a fur coat, but then he's a goat. A goat in a fur coat would look kind of weird for the Wild. So, so what it says about the Wild is, Nature can be both shield and weapon, brought to bear against the enemy or to defend allied troops. So this is a very debuff buff type Shaman, buffing your other units. So, first off, we'll go through the basics that all Shaman have, and that's Missile Resistance of 15%. He can Encourage, giving that Leadership boost. He can Hide in a Forest, and he has the Primal Fury, which gives him that Melee Attack bonus, Charge bonus and Speed, and Immune to Psychology, unless they're Wavering, which uh, most Beastman units have. So, all, those, all the Shaman have those four abilities, but the spells are totally different. There's a couple of crossover spells, all very similar with different names, uh, but we'll go through them. First, we've got Bestial Surge, which is a constant uh, ability around himself, and it's map-wide. So all your units in your army get plus 24 speed and plus 10% vigor. This is one of the single most powerful abilities that the Brace Shaman have, especially if you're on a, if you particularly use a quick running, um, quick hitting, hard moving, hard moving, quick moving hard hitting <laughs> you army like with lots of vanguard units because they can be the other side of the map and still get this bonus so this is just hugely useful if you if you use that type of army next up we've got the vile tide which is an explosion aimed on the ground 200 meters dis uh, range and it's strong versus multiple units does magical damage it's got a large explosion it does an okay amount of damage um, but it really does do a good job at disrupting the enemy line especially just before you hit them in combat Next up we've got Devolve, which is the debuff, which gives them a, it's a only 100 meter range, and um, you cast it on an enemy or the ground, and it affects units within 30 meters, and it does a small amount of damage, but it gives minus 8 leadership, which is really good if you want to sort of turn the tide of a battle. Next up we've got a Traitorkin, which is a direct damage spell. Last, uh, it's cast on the ground or an enemy unit, 200 meter range, uh, affects all units within 30 meters, and it's much better for going after hero characters um also uh, very good at going after like cavalry and stuff because this gives a minus 24 percent speed which is a massive chunk of speed so you can either go after a particular let's say you've got a wizard on a griffin and you, or a, a, a fighty on a griffin or the um demogriffs that sort of thing if you can slow them down and stop them getting in the fight because they're such a good unit and a good impact unit if they take 20 seconds longer to get into a fight, that's fantastic. Or you can also slow down like one side of the enemy line so you can hit the other side. There's some really good uses for this. It's a nice spell. Next up, we've got Brace Green, which is a breath weapon. I'm not a fan of breath weapons because it means if you're using it, you're probably too close to the enemy. <laughs> it's only got a 50 meter range. It's a breath weapon. It shoots out and does it does do a very high amount of damage um, against sort of large units. Uh, but like I said, it's... It, it's Maybe something you use just before you reach combat, because otherwise you're going to get splatted. You need you, you need to be around your mates if you're casting that spell. Next up, we've got Mantle of Garok, which you cast on an ally unit within 200 meters. And it's a, it's an interesting one, this. Um, Garok was legendary minotaur, ferocious as a storm. His spirit mantle is terrible but dangerous to the bearer. So, you cast it on a, your own unit, and it causes damage to your own unit. Um, there is a chance that the damage will be resisted, uh, but if when it goes through, 
it gives a massive bonus to weapon damage and melee attack, plus 58 and 44 percent. It's worth it, even if your unit takes a bit of damage, it's so worth it, that damage is ridiculous. Next up we've got Sam Savage Dominion. Now, this is uh, what I talked about in my Cygor video, um, go check that out if you want to learn more about Cygors, is that you basically create a Cygor, which is a giant artillery unit. It does cost 16 mana, which is, or power, um, which is huge, it kind of drains you in pretty much your entire pool, but it does, you know, who doesn't want more artillery in your army? Um, really good sort of decent spell to have. There is a better summon spell for one of the others that we'll go through shortly. And obviously he's got the Arcane Conduit, which is a um, cast on itself, lasts 40 seconds, and it increases uh, power reserves and recharge rate, which you'll need if you're summoning Cygors. Right, there you go. You're done, mate. You're done. Next up, we've got Death Magic. Now, as you'd expect, Death Magic is much more about just dealing damage. Um, we've seen it in other... Um, on the Empire videos and stuff like this, and uh, very just damage dealers are uh, probably the most popular type of wizards I've seen. That, especially when having watched lots of mul multiplayer battles, people do like something that does damage. So he's got the four standard stuff that we've been through before. He's also got life leeching, which um, just increases his power reserves and recharge rate, and it's map wide and it's constant, which is lovely. He's going to be casting a lot of spells with the death with the death uh, shaman. I'm going to say Death Knight for some reason. And then you've got Aspect of the Dread Knight. It's cast on an ally within 200 meters. Lasts for 17 seconds. It gives him a small boost to leadership. But it, mean, it, it gives the unit terror. Which is amazing versus like low leadership stuff. That just crap themselves at the merest hint of a battle. Like goblins and stuff like that. Really, really good unit to have. A uh, spell to have. Especially for like a, a 200 meters is a decent range. So you can use it on your sort of your center goals or your... Um, to as they sneak around the back just to help break enemy units next up we've got spirit leech which is a direct damage spell for the last 13 seconds cast on an enemy unit quite a short range 100 meters and it's very good against hero characters or small elite um, units does a ton of damage but like i said not very good against multiple units at all don't use it it's not worth the eight power to use that next up we've got doom and darkness which is a hex spell 200 meter range which is good and it gives the um Enemy unit minus 16 leadership, which is fantastic. If you want to tie the turn of a battle, that's a really, really good one to use. And then we've got Soul Blight, which is another hex that you can cast on the ground or an enemy unit. And it affects everybody within 45 meters of that. And it's a debuff to armor, leadership, missile damage, and weapon damage. There's not many debuffs to missile damage in the game. There's only two or three. So this is really good if you're fighting a dwarf army. That's got a ton of fucking quarrelers and stuff like that. You can actually use that just to minus 22% damage is quite huge. Next up, we've got the Purple Sun of Zedos, which is a vortex spell. We all love a vortex spell. Cast it on the ground, 150 meters away, and it pops up, it swells around, it sucks people in, it spits people out, does a sort of fair amount of damage, good against um, sort of large units, and it has an area effect that lasts for 11 seconds and that moves randomly. So don't class it too close to yourself because it, it could do you damage. But then we've got the Fate of Boona, a direct damage spell. Uh, cast on an enemy unit 100 meters and it's n just another sort of area effect. Good against multiple units. Uh, sorry, large units, sort of weak characters and stuff like that. So nice. And they've got the Arcane Conduit as we've talked about before. And then finally, we've got the beasts. What does it say about the beasts? The beasts of the world rise up and obey when summoned. Their very essence used to empower and transform the caster. Now, by the looks of that, you're thinking all these spells, they're gonna be we're gonna be raising shit. We're gonna be summoning all sorts of creatures, which is and, and it's not quite as good as that, which is a bit disappointing, but there is a very good spell in there, which I'll show you. So apart from the standard four, we've got Wild Heart, which is an increase to power reserves. Just constant goes around. Wizen's Wild Form, which casts on an ally unit within 200 meters and it gives them plus armor and plus weapon damage. Great stay in a fight, plus armor is a nice, nice chunk of uh, change. Next up, we've got a Flock of Doom, um, which is a uh, direct damage spell, lasts for seven seconds. You can cast on the ground or the enemy unit, quite a short range of 100 meters, and it affects units within 30 meters. And it just sort of does a sort of small bit of damage to units in there. It's, it's not very damaged. I'm not a massive fan of this. It's only six power. 
so it does help, especially with morale damage as well. Um, but it does do a little bit of damage to sort of large units and stuff like that. Next up, we've got the Amber Spear, and this is um, really, really good against high armoured characters like, you know, the Hero Unit or the Demigriff Knights, anything that's really heavily armoured because it's a spell that does a ton of armour piercing damage. 200 metre range. Um, and uh, good penetration and effective at all range. So that's that's quite nice. Um, very useful. It's ten power. They're quite expensive, but try it out if you're playing against like a steam tank and stuff like this. This is this is great to use against that sort of thing. Next up, we got Pan's impenetrable pelt. Easy for me to say. Uh, cast on an ally within two hundred meters, and it does plus twenty two percent damage resistance and plus twenty four percent speed, which is fantastic. But it also it lasts for 50 seconds, which is incredible. So you can cast it on a, a unit of centaurs over here. And then run all the way around, flank the enemy, go for their artillery. All while still having this buff, which is really, really good. It's kind of, people forget that actually that is a long, long ass buff. And uh, plus the, the damage resistance is fantastic. Next up we've got the Curse of Anrahir. 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 That one, and it's a hex spell. This is really good. We talked about the last ability. This is one of the other abilities that reduces effectiveness of missile armies. So, if you're fighting a lot of dwarfs, this is a great spell to use. It slows them down, which for dwarfs means they're just going to be standing still. And but minus 20% accuracy, which is which is superb. 200 meter range. Uh, cast on an enemy unit or the ground as standard and an effective range of 45 meters So you can get a lot of their front line in one spell just so their quarrelers are just like what the fuck I can't shoot anymore So very very good spell next up. We got the big one Which is the transformation of Kadon which is you cast on the ground It's only very short range and it basically summons a manticore Yes a manticore which will can be used for the rest of the battle and then it's got arcane conduit so let's have a talk about how we use these guys, shall we? And then let's also cast some spells. Um, first off, let's let's uh, let's make a manticore, shall we? I think that would be the wisest choice. Should we do it for manticore? Yeah. Which one is it? I still haven't memorised the bloody like images. There we go. Like I said, very short range. There's there's max range there. We'll we'll stick him here. So, with the other ability, this guy here can summon the Saigor. But I think, in terms of battle, this, this is much more useful. Especially it suits the Beastman army um, incredibly well. 4,700 hit points. Weapon strength 430. Um, how much of that is armor piercing? 145, which is still decent. Causes terror. Absolutely fantastic. Um, but like I said, does does cost a lot of mana. So cast that really early on. Get your manticore up. And then um, let you let the power build up again. I keep calling it mana. I'm so used to the tabletop game. Let's let's go for a purple sun, shall we? I do love a purple sun. That's what, that's what they say, isn't it? Right. But let's talk about how you'd use them. So let's 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 separate them out. So we've got our wild dude here. So he's got a lot of buffs and debuffs. Um, there's some leadership bonuses, some speed debuffs there. Uh, this is huge. The mantle of Garak. For me, this is my favourite guy and the re favourite uh, shaman, and the reason why is I just love this. I just love giving all my units plus 24 speed and plus 10% vigour. I think that is absolutely huge. So that's my personal favourite. He also has the um, mantle of Garok, which is just a massive buff. Does some damage, but a massive buff. So he's a kind of buffing machine. <clears throat> basically um, to help supplement your army next up you've got death which actually you expect just does a crap ton of damage um, not too much to be said about him if you like direct damage and just messing up the enemy this is the guy for you finally we've got the um, beast I'm disappointed he only has one summon spell um, which is disappointing but he's got some decent buffs this is probably my least used one I'd say um, not because he's sort of bad uh, any, uh, particularly and I think it's more because I either want to go for my plus 24 percent speed or I want to go for massive amounts of damage um, they're the sort of two extremes that I want to do so let's let's go for a purple sun tree let's check out the range so it's not we're gonna whack it okay they're gonna come to me are you gonna come over here lads 
Let's cast it there and then hope it hope it goes about. Obviously, these aren't fighter characters, so you don't want to be trogging off on their own, doing their own thing. There we go for the purple sun. Oh yeah! As you can see, I'll wait until it finishes. So you can, see, it doesn't do a massive amount of damage, but if you can cast this, like, it really disrupts their line. If you hit three or four units in this spell, it it absolutely messes their line up, and then you can attack, find weak points, and go for it. And um, what should we go for next? Uh. A bit of vile tide, yeah. Strong versus. We'll go for a bit of vile tide. Let's see. Remember, the enemy does get a warning that a spell's coming a lot of the time. Ah, oh, there you go, Bosh. Again, disappointing amount of damage, um, but it all adds up. Let's go for. We can't summon. We got ten power. Um, well, let's have a look. Where's our? Um, Where's our Buffy McBuff Buster? Oh, I'm having a brain fart. I am having a brain fart, people. Um, 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 what am I doing? Anyone? Answer on a postcard, people. I like the way the enemy are just standing there taking it. It's like, you know my power regenerates, lads. I can just keep casting shit. Right. So let's get yeah this is the one we, this is the dude we want and <clears throat> let's see how much damage it'll do. What should we cast on? Let's cast it on this manticore. So this manticore has 4740. Uh, 4, we'll cast this on the manticore because this is this is the spell if I click on the right bloody shaman this is the spell that does damage to or can cause damage to your own units. Um, but there is a chance to resist it. So let's see. Ooh. Oh, he's loving life. He is loving life. Should we just do a random charge just to see how he gets on? The Manticore's a decent decent flying monster. Obviously, that flying on this means you can go after artillery and all that stuff. In combat, he's decent, but he can get swamped. So that's the only thing. You need to not send him on his own like I'm doing now. <laughs> These poor little guys. Oh, my God. Right, he's going to chew some faces off. Lovely. But he'll, if you remember, I, I've... This is not a unit. I, I've summoned this guy. So any damage he does is just a massive bonus. So he's tearing through this first unit. I think he's just going to get overwhelmed with the numbers. Um, we, we've got no power to really... We can give him... We just keep, This is my new method. Send one unit in and just keep buffing him with three shamans. <laughs> so we've given him another buff now to be a bit more survivable. His... The biggest problem he's going to have is with, with the uh, leadership, just because he's getting swamped. Eventually he will die. But he did alright, didn't he? There you go, guys. There's my um, little mini guide to the shamans. Let me know which is your favourite and why, and which do you think's weakest. My favourite is beasts. Um, I love the... Um, where is it? The uh, Wissens Wild 4. No. Shit in hell. I am literally losing my marbles. I shouldn't record in the morning. Um... What am I... I've lost the plot. This is not the guy, is it? This is not the guy I'm talking about. I'm going mental. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. Okay, it was my manacle flown off. Okay, fine. Right. Uh, my favourite is, is the wild. Because I love... I like the hit and run armies. I like using the vanguard and the speed. And therefore, 24% speed and 10% vigour is huge. I also love the ability to spawn a Saigor if needed. If I need a different type of army. And also this mantle of Garok. Although can cause damage. Does a crap ton of damage. Yeah, you put that on a unit of Minotaurs. And they are going to eat faces for breakfast. Right. There you go guys. Hope you enjoyed my little video. Um... Like I said, let me know which is your favourite and why, which you use the most of. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.